Closed captioning for sport fishing on the fly is brought to you by The Frog Boat, inspired by nature, ingenious by design. Fishing is all about knowledge and chance. And we took a chance by coming up to fish the Kitimat and Terrace areas during the prime time, supposedly, at the end of September. What we found was everywhere where the waters were blowing and murky because of the rain, the fish were. And everywhere that the waters were nice and clear, the fish weren't. We're going to show you today all the tragedies and the compilation of all the rivers we did throughout this northern swing. That's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander Reels, G. Loomis Rods, and High Drift Boats. You could probably, I think the technique, it'll depend whether you bottom bounce it or, you know, not sure with the bad water clarity. Right. I mean, we only have a foot of visibility, so that's what makes it tough. Got these big flies, these rabbit strips we're using, but I don't know how, you know, I mean, you almost have to pass it right in front of their face. Oh, oh right there. everyone blown there. Like they're there. They're there, yeah. Big coho. Well, you know, we've had to contend with the conditions. We've had straight rain for the past five days. It hasn't been easy. We've been shut out on all the streams because everything's blowing and we're just having to work with what we got. That's what we have to do. I'm almost thinking that uh, you might have to try that little egg pattern fly. I might just, have to try uh, the egg, eh? You almost nymphed in there, you know where they are? Well, just it's another technique. I... I mean, right now you're swinging. So we've got big rabbit strip flies on pink and black trying to swing the fly by the coho, but if they don't see it, you know, with the water clarity the way it is, uh, you know, if they're avoiding leaves and all the other debris coming down, then they're going to think your fly is nothing anyways. It won't make them mad, so. Because these fish aren't feeding, they're hitting it out of anger, I think. Yeah, and again, it's the big thing is the, uh, I think that where it narrows up, I know some runs down below, there's one run in particular where there's riffles and things that come in right. that I think will produce for us where we have swinging flies because they all migrate to there. These big pools might be difficult because, again, there's so much water to cover. Right. I think we, we focus on little narrow channels with the water clarity, we might be better. Okay. I 
try to keep them out of that wood. So as soon as you swung into the, the, the shallower water, you get it. Oh, see him against the wood? Yeah. Boy, is he going down on you? Oh, no. Oh, he's going down. <laughs> oh. Well, he shouldn't go past the tail, Oh, I got big trouble. Do you? Look at that goal. Look where he is. I'm in serious trouble. Are ya? Oh, is he down in the shallow? Oh, great. Can you hold him in the pool? That's the big key, try to hold him in the pool. Oh. Uh-oh. He could be gone. You know I'm gonna try. Yeah, slack it off and see if he'll come back. Yeah. That's a good technique for everybody to know about. If you have a guy that wants to leave the pool, especially this big coho, slacking right off on the line, and a lot of times they'll swim right back to you, or they'll hold right there. Which he's doing, isn't he? Yeah. We may be able to get him on the inside over here, if we're lucky. Well, he's holding there. I mean, the trick worked, right? You just slacking off on him and let him sit. The only bad thing, of course, is your fly gets loose. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, hey, it's barbed with rules, the way it is. OK, I got my fly line back. <laughs> if I'm hoping that now we're all backing. Right down here by this dead drift boat, maybe I can get him. Sure. Oh, he's going back up. Oh, he looks big. Boy. Oh, he keeps going, eh? My only hope is down here in this little pocket. My last chance is gonna be there. If he goes past there. Oh. Yeah. He's on the bank. Nice. Nice go uh -huh. Nice fish. Yeah. How big is that guy? I'd say close to 10 pounds, yeah. eight, 8 to 10. Oh yeah, nice big male. Nice male, what's that? Nice. Hey, well, let's get him back in the water. Oh, oh, oh. there it goes. <laughs> nice release. Good job. Right oh. on. All right, well, we'll continue. There's number one. Well, let's see the fly. Big rabbit strip. Pink. Hold it up. Oh yeah, nice. Big rabbit strip. Big pink rabbit yeah, strip fly. Okay, well, let's see if we get some more. Right where you landed the fish. Ooh, what's that over there? The bad drift boat. That's when, uh, so we have to be careful out here. You look at that drift boat, it's all sunken down in the water. Obviously somebody didn't navigate properly. And you can look and see there's all the wood here. You know, you got lots of wood, lots of swinging overhand branches. You got to be very careful out on this water. Because there's a lot of swingers that'll take a boat down.
one. Usually what I've noticed too is they really go psycho once you get them in a bit. Oh! Pull out. No. Yeah. Oh. Pull off. Unfortunate. Yeah, that was a good size one too. It was. You know, my fly is kind of uh that's another thing you should always have is a sharpener because I've been banging those rocks so much that I thought about checking my fly and oh. yeah, the point's pretty dull. Is it? Yeah. Oh, too bad. Too bad. Well, I'll hook another one. While we have a break in the action, which has been a little light so far, I want to show you some of the different patterns we use. Now, this box here is mainly the fly patterns we use when the water is clear. When the water is clear, you want to go small. And again, the, the big colors we want to use, this one here has always been one of our favorites, the little Kelsey's Hope. It's got the blue, the green, the silver to it, very nice patterns. Got some other smaller purple ones. Mainly again though, pinks and blues are our two favorites for sure. And again, these are only size, I would think, you know, 10s, 8s, even 12 sometimes and streamer hooks and steelhead hooks. When the water gets a little murked, it's slightly tainted, we want to go to what we call our medium sized flies. And again, we've got a whole bunch of different patterns, some, some Brent attractor patterns that he tied, Brent Schlenker, one of our good friends, ties a bunch of these ones here. We've got a whole bunch of the egg sucking leeches in medium sizes, all in different colors. But again, you can see in the box, we've got our green ones, we've got mainly our purples and our pinks. Again, purple and pinks are very good. And finally, when the water's really murky like it is today, it's really bad. We've probably got about two feet, a foot to two feet of visibility. We go with the big bombs. Now these are all big patterns and mainly tied with rabbit strip. I've got my big black, I call them. We've got big pink. They're all rabbit flies and the bigger the better. I mean, some of these patterns here, you can tell, are quite long. They're like three inches long, two to three inches long. So again, when the water's murky, Go big, it always works for the coho. Today on the bench I'm going to tie you up summer steel. Now this pattern is very effective for summer on steelhead and the way Dale and I fish it is one person will have the dry fly set up with a dry fly where we spuddle on the top and the other person will have the summer steel on and usually summer steel since it is subsurface picks up the majority of fish. We have issues with that fighting over the rod and who's got to use it, but it is a very effective pattern. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we're going to use a size 8 Mustad R90 steelhead hook. Some 3 aught red thread to tie with. Some thin black rabbit strip for the body. Some fluorescent pink marabou and black marabou for the collar. And some small dumbbell eyes for the eyes. To start the fly off, as we do with all our patterns, is tie in a good base layer of our 3 aught red. And make sure this is 3 aught. You want a fairly stout thread when you're tying this pattern. And tie it right to the back of the hook. Now that the thread's all tied in, we're going to take our dumbbell eyes. And I prefer the non-colored version, but you can use the, you can use yellow, you can use pink, you can use different colors, but I prefer the, the silver eyes. And make sure you do a lot of figurating around the eyes. You want these to be solid on the hook and you don't want them to move, so make sure you time in very good, figurating back and forth over the eyes. The next step is to tie in my black zonker strip, and it is a small black zonker strip. The most important part of this is you have the actual strip itself of the rabbit. What I'm going to do is make sure the strip goes as far as my thread, so really to the rear of the hook. I'm going to tie the strip in by the eyes, but I only want the strip part of the rabbit to go to the hook bend and then actually the rabbit fur will extend past the hook but you only want the strip to go to the hook bend so that's a very important part so what I'm going to do is cut it off at that point and tie it in right behind my eyes once the rabbit's tied in we'll take some black marabou and now this black marabou is going to be tied in the same as a hackle would be we're going to strip off the 
the butt section of the marabou. We're going to tie it in near the eyes. Trim off our excess stem. And actually take some hackle pliers, hook onto our marabou, and then wrap it around the fly about two or three times to create a marabou hackle. As you're wrapping the marabou, keep pulling it back towards the base of the hook. And this is actually going to create a real nice marabou collar. Keep pulling it back as you wrap it. Once you're finished pulling it all back, tie it in near the, tie it off here, near behind the eyes. Now that the black collar of marabou is tied in, we want a very thin layer of our pink marabou. Now I've stripped the I stripped it down, you can see on the camera here, I've stripped this pink one way down to just the top. I only want one or two wraps of the pink over top. It's just a highlight. So again, we're going to tie it in by the stem, just behind the eyes, tie it in good. Cut off the excess stem. And then take about two or three wraps of our pink marabou, probably only two, just to give it a little bit of highlight. And I just hold it with my fingers, and again, as I tie it in, I'm pulling the material, the collar, back to accentuate the pattern so that all that marabou goes back on the fly and tie it off at just behind the eyes. To finish the fly off, we want to wrap around our eyelets. Again, wrap around our eyes and cover up anything around the eyes so we have a nice red head on the fly. And make sure you cover up any of that material that you've tied in earlier. And don't go, don't go too far back on the marabou. You want just the head to remain red just around the eyes. And give it a real, don't be afraid to wrap a lot of thread around there. Really fill in, fill it around the eyes with red. Move to the front, right up by the eyelet. And whip finish to finish off the fly. As I mentioned on the intro, the person who draws this fly first is usually the person to get the first fish. Again, a great pattern to have in your arsenal when you're going after summer on steelhead. We've had a very tough day, the bad weather, but Dale got us in some fish. We decided to hightail down. The water's totally murked up in the Kitimat today, really murked up. So he's got us down below some clearer water that came in on the creeks. Swing, swung a fly. First time you swung it through, eh, Dale? Yeah. Bam. You got one, and then I swung it right after, and this big guy hit. That's the thing with a coho, boy, they just tail walk, they go crazy. He took a couple of big screaming runs. Man. Minimum, again, eight weight rods out here. You need these, I got a GL3 eight weight. And we're using heavy pound test. I mean, we're having to use real big flies, like monster flies. I've got a big articulated leech black on because the water's so dirty. And remember too, when the water's really dirty, big flies, you gotta go big when the water's dirty like this. That's a big, whoa. He's gotta be getting tired. Big male, look at that capo. Whoa. Big male. And he hit that in about maximum a foot and a half of water. He was coming right up that edge. Whoa. I'll see if I can get him up here. See if he's ready. <laughs> Big fish. Whoa. Alrighty. Big northern, eh? Hey? Wow. Big. Big, big fish. Hopefully he's not gonna go psycho when I grab him. There he is, there. Right on the, the jaw. There's all, that's a healthy fish. That's got some weight to him. Oh, he's probably 12-ish, uh, 13. Yeah, I right in there, that so. range there. Yeah, nice little snow. Big dog. male. Yeah, and there you go. That's what you're gonna expect. We've got the bad weather again, the bad conditions, but big northern. Pull him up again. Look at how thick he is, too. Real fat fish, nice and silver. You know, some will actually get with the, with the uh, sea lice still on them. This guy's fresh, beautiful color. 
He's gonna wanna go right away. Look at him, high tail over that shallow. Look at he's coming right towards Big Al. There he goes. So, what's happening? Not much happening. Al lost another one. He gets a steelhead in every stream we fish. Fails to stay hooked up. But the problem is, how many steelhead are probably in this river That's right now? I mean. There's so few, but Al, Big Al, has come through and hooked up, but has not stayed hooked up. <laughs> Well, one you bust off. That was, that was Break off was worse. Oh, we've just gone through some absolute prime water, but you know what? That's the thing about uh, you know the fish that are actually migrating. <laughs> Sometimes they don't come in. Well, we talked to those locals. We just talked, to, and they had the campground was full. The day we arrived, we, uh, campgrounds were packed solid, and they've been fishing here now for five days. We've returned. The campground is virtually empty. <laughs> We talked to uh, all the locals down in the town, and what did they say? You know, they're about three weeks behind, yeah. they figure, with the waters way low and clear, and uh, even the trees and stuff, they figure about three weeks uh, behind. That's crazy. It's uh, September 29th today, and it should be prime, but hey, that's the way it goes sometimes. That's the chance you take, as I mentioned at the intro. Well, that's a nice thing for me living here. I'll be back on Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, you bum. <laughs> <laughs> Expectations. I think that's the whole theme of today's show, expectations. I came up here expecting some big things, you know, it's supposed to be prime time, but that's the thing about migratory fish. You never know when they're actually going to migrate, when they're going to come up. Salmon, steelhead, you just don't know. Yeah, we had the weather against us. We had where the fish were. Of course, the rains came, blew the water out. So we tried to fish the... <laughs> blew them out? Are you kidding me? <laughs> we tried to fish zero visibility oh. streams. And of course, we did actually hook some fish in it there, is. which was amazing. Big Al hooked three steelhead in yeah. water. You wouldn't think anybody could hook a fish in, unfortunately. <laughs> Both one off and lost two. But, yeah. but anyway, we had, uh, other than that, I think we had, uh, what, four four steelhead in total yeah. that we yep. hooked. I got one on a dry fly in the clean water, the yep. spudler, when we weren't anywhere near the camera, of course. Exactly. But yep. uh, really, overall, I, I think it's uh, it should be prime, prime season right now, the end of September, and all the locals are saying the fish are three weeks, two, three weeks late. Yeah, we had quite a warm summer. You know, it was a warmer summer this year and everything else, but that's what you have to expect. When you come out, always have, like fishermen do, you know, they're always confident. They come out here with a lot of confidence. But expect what you're going to get. You just don't know, especially when you're going after these kind of fish. Anyways, I want to thank Big Al Dunbar for joining us. We always, the trio we have, always a lot of fun. Thanks a lot for coming along. Always have a good time, and we'll see you next time. We take sport fishing on the fly. To watch all our latest sport fishing on the fly episodes and to order sport fishing on the fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you would like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.